you may have heard that land the size of a football field disappears from the Louisiana coast every 100 minutes, or that since the 1930s, this state has lost a wetland equivalent to the size of Delaware. But why is so much land being lost here? And if it's because of sea level rise, then how come it's so much more pronounced in Louisiana than we see elsewhere? Well, although sea level rise is a global issue caused by global increases in temperatures and a decrease in the percent of freshwater stored in ice caps, the rate of sea level rise varies geographically depending on local factors. Relative sea level rise in Louisiana is around three times faster than the global eustatic rate. This is largely because coastal Louisiana is subsiding or sinking. Now you may ask, okay Fiona, but why is coastal Louisiana sinking? Well, subsidence in Louisiana can be, can be explained by two main factors. The first is oil and gas extraction. These hydrocarbons are stored in subsurface reservoirs that look something like this. Tiny droplets of oil and natural gas live within the pore spaces in rocks beneath the surface. Certain rock types, mainly limestone and sandstone, are porous enough to be able to store these fluids. This is similar to the way that a sponge holds water. Layers of more impermeable rock types, like granite or basalt, act as a cap or a seal, preventing the low density fluids from rising to the surface and trapping them in these underground reservoirs. The concave geometry of the rock layers expressed in this diagram is called an anticline, and it also favors the collection of oil and gas in one place. So, when fluids are then removed from these permeable layers by oil drills, the little droplets in the pores of the rock no longer exert pressure against the walls of the pore spaces. This decrease in pressure causes the pore spaces to collapse which results in overall compaction of the reservoir, which leads to subsidence of the land. The decreased pressure associated with the withdrawal of hydrocarbons can also exert stresses on existing faults in the area. When enough pressure builds up on these faults, they can reactivate and slip, causing further sinking of the land. The petroleum industry also contributes to land loss in the form of oil spills. Oil drills in Louisiana are mainly located offshore and require pipelines to transport the oil to refineries. This map shows the dense spider web of pipelines that flow through Louisiana shown in green and the surrounding coasts. Each line shows a different type of pipeline. When one of the pipes in this vast network breaks, oil is released into the ocean or leached into coastal sediments. This has a toxic effect on seagrasses, which act as critical anchors for the sediment, protecting it against coastal erosion. The damage to marsh grasses as a result of these oil spills is therefore a key contributor to land loss in Louisiana. Here is a clip of some oil platforms off the coast of Louisiana. Those dark columns you see are the oil drills. This clip also highlights just how much the coast has been inundated. When this road was built, it was surrounded by land, but now it is enveloped by water. The other main factor is river engineering. If you take a look at an aerial view of Louisiana on Google Maps and zoom in, you'll find that it's covered in all of these unnatural straight lines that cut through the marshes along the Mississippi River. These are man-made shipping canals that were designed to facilitate navigation. And just like the oil pipelines, they form a dense network along the coast. These waterways cut deep into the wetlands, allowing saltwater to infiltrate the soil and damage the grasses. This is called saltwater intrusion, and it can have devastating effects on the wetland plants that hold the soil together. Building these canals also contributes to land loss because it requires dredging, which involves the physical removal of sediment from the wetlands, making them even more susceptible to coastal erosion. Here is what some of the tools required to build the canals look like. They're called floating dredge pipelines. But river engineering doesn't just contribute to land loss in the form of navigational canals, it also does this in the form of dams. In the upper Mississippi, there are 29 locks and dams that restrict sediment flow to the river delta. This also limits its capacity to prograde outwards or build new land into the ocean. 
Other flood control structures, like levees, which look like this, prevent the river from being able to overflow its banks and deposit sediment onto the floodplain. By not allowing this sediment to accumulate on the floodplain over time, artificial levees make the land more vulnerable to erosion. Ultimately, these attempts to control the dynamic environment of the river delta end up starving the coast of sediment, which makes it more susceptible to erosion and land loss. So at this point, you're probably wondering, well, what about the people who live here? What can be done to protect them against these threats of subsidence and erosion? Well, the truth is that many of the people who call coastal Louisiana home are low-income communities who aren't well-equipped to combat these issues. Property values are so low that people can't just sell their homes and move to another place, and so they resort to protective measures. Like, for example, raising their homes more than eight feet above the ground to make them more flood resistant. And leaders of indigenous groups from coastal Louisiana, like Chief Devin Parfait and Elder Chief Sherelle Parfait Dardar of the Grand Caillou Dulac Band of the Biloxi Chittimaya Choctaw, work with the government to promote projects like canal backfilling to improve the health of wetlands and return sediment to the Mississippi River Delta. Ultimately, understanding the causes and mechanisms of this subsidence can help us to combat its effects and to support policies that will protect these diverse communities living at the water's edge.